Hello, my name is Bob Golding, and I am a senior escalation engineer at Microsoft, located at the Charlotte facility in North Carolina. I am making a series of videos on MPIO or Multipath IO. Today we're going to talk about the uh, MPIO basics, and later videos will get deeper and deeper into the uh, the workings of MPIO. Today we're going to talk about the basics and what does it do. Multipath I.O. Is, you know, does what it uh, what the name implies. You have mu multiple paths going to the same logical unit and MPIO will manage them. If a path fails, depending on the error and what the DSM does, which we'll talk about in a moment, the path will be taken out of service and MPIO will, will uh, send I.O. down the remaining paths. <clears throat> and if the path, if service to the path is restored, say if the error is transient and the path recovers, the path is represented to the system and I.O. will resume on that path and all paths will co uh, come back into service. What does MPI do exactly? Like I mentioned before, there are multiple paths to the same disk. It can be fiber channel or iSCSI. And the paths have load balancing rules for issuing I.O. When I.O., what I mean by a load balancing rule is that, uh, for example, one of the load balancing rules is round robin. So if there are four paths, the first I.O. will be sent down path 0, second down path 1, path 3, path 4, and so on, and will wrap around. There are other load balancing rules available as well, which we'll talk about in a later video. If a path failure is detected, the path is taken out of service. It depends on the error. Uh, there is a uh, part of the, part of uh, MPIO subsystem called the DSM, which we'll talk about uh, basic uh, basic function in a moment. And what the DSM does, the DSM will will determine if a path if the error. Uh, uh, is severe enough to where the path should be taken out of service. So if the path failure is detected, the path is taken out of service and I.O. continue on the remaining paths. And like I mentioned before, if the error is transient, the path can be restored and put back into service again and, res and I.O. resume over all paths. Now here's a <clears throat> basic picture. We have a server and uh, multiple paths to a LUN. The paths are A1 and A2. And without multipathing, the host will incorrectly interpret the two paths lead to the storage unit, and this can result in a, in a blue screen. With multipathing software, the server will, will correctly interpret the two paths leading to the same storage unit. Now, all the paths are managed in the MPIO driver. Now, what makes up the MPIO subsystem? There's a driver called MPIO.sys, which is a Microsoft supplied driver. It handles all failover processing. And also there's a DSM, which stands for which is the device specific module. <clears throat> the DSM has knowledge of the underlying hardware. Uh, Microsoft provides a generic DSM, and the DSM the, DSM's, uh, the DSM is modified by uh, so, some OEMs so they can provide uh, better detection of failures uh, or um, a lot, some manufacturers do not supply their own DSM and, and uh, it will be the, use the Microsoft DSM. But a OEM supplied DSM will better handle <coughs> errors um, on on their uh, on the OEM's uh, underlying subsystem, the DSM also manages a Lua, which is asymmetric logical unit access. The DSM does path management, also for persistent reservations. We'll talk about that in a later video. Uh, video. DSM is responsible for load balancing, and the DSM is responsible for determining what to do on an I/O error. There are a number of things that can happen. Uh, the I.O. error, we could fail over because the, the, it's determined that the path is bad, or uh, MPIO will retry, or the error could be passed up, uh, up the I.O. stack. And this all depends on what the DSM decides to do. 
<clears throat> I mentioned previously, Microsoft provides <clears throat> a generic DSM. Many OEMs supply their own because, again, the DSM that Microsoft supplies is generic. And Microsoft DSM is extensible, and many OEMs take our DSM, which is available on the web, modify it, <clears throat> and supply that with their I.O. subsystems. <clears throat> MPIO lives right at the mini port layer. So at the port, mini port is replaced with MPIO. So if all I.O. is at a set to MPIO is as if it was sent to the mini port. And MPIO will determine which path, along with the DSM, will determine which path the I.O. should be sent on and the I.O. is forwarded down to uh, the, the mini port driver, uh, or the port driver, which would usually store port in the mini port driver and the request to go out to the storage. All the paths are appear to uh, our store port as a separate unit, but MPIO will manage these units and present and prevent the unit from coming up into the I/O stack where it could cause problems, which we'll discuss in a later video. So that's that's uh, the basic uh, basics behind MPIO. Uh, there will be other videos in the future where I'll get more into uh, more in depth and how the uh, how the DSM works. So I, uh, D, our DSM and MPIO. I hope um, to see you. Hope uh, to do uh, enjoy this video, and uh, we'll hope to, to hope you enjoy the, the videos in the future. Again, it's Bob Golding uh, from Microsoft Charlotte, and thank you very much.